The second season of Loki is almost finished, following six weeks of mayhem and time travel. This Thursday night on Disney+, Plus, the Marvel Cinematic Universe season finale premieres, posing a serious threat to Loki and his allies. Fans have been waiting eagerly to discover the multiversal implications of this last episode, since the announcement of Avengers, Secret Wars, and finally they can. See what transpires in Loki's sophomore season's sixth and final episode by continuing to watch. Spoilers for Loki Season 2, Episode 6, Glorious Purpose, Off Course. We witness the moments leading up to Timely's demise, as the Marvel Studios fanfare is played backwards. Timely needs to leave, Loki tells the squad, time slipping to that exact moment. Loki asks OB what they can do differently once he dies in either case. When OB complains that they took too long, Loki retreats and tries to expedite the scene. Relentlessly dies in timely fashion. He rushes things even further by going back to the time when Timely first met Obi when Loki inquires about the time required for him to acquire all of Obi's knowledge. He is informed that it would take millennia. A title card claims that Loki does travel through eras and gains all the knowledge required to guide Timely through the quest. Along with all of Loki's newfound knowledge, he instructs Casey to secure Timely's helmet, which makes the walk go more smoothly. Timely succeeds in pressing the button and returns to the base. As the loom starts to stabilize, Obi observes that there are far too many branches, which is causing an overload. According to Timely, the multiverse is expanding too quickly for the loom to manage in the near future. According to Sylvie, this started with the establishment of branched timelines. Apologizes promptly to Loki when the loom bursts open again. In an attempt to prevent Sylvie from stabbing he who remains, Loki travels back in time to the events of the first season final. He informs Sylvie that she was correct to doubt him or that he no longer cares to recover a throne. She makes a threat, saying she won't stop until he kills her. Loki tries to stop Sylvie at earlier and earlier points in the cycle, repeating it repeatedly. He remains uses his tempad to halt Sylvie in response to Loki's question about why he isn't attempting to stop her. He admits that he is aware of Loki's time lapse and claims that his death at Sylvie's hands was all part of his scheme because he would eventually reincarnate. When he who remains returns to time, Loki confesses that he has already spoken with he who remains on this specific occasion. Once more delaying time, he who remains discloses that Loki has been wasting his time because nothing in the loom genuinely pertains to the sacred timeline. When Loki attempts to shatter the loom in an attempt to alter the equation, he who remains responds that the loom is the only thing preventing the multiversal conflict that will ultimately kill everything, and that he is extending mercy to the cosmos. Loki maintains he's going to find another route and won't believe it. Resuming time, he who remains instructs Loki to preserve all he can. Loki travels back in time to the events of the first episode of Season 1, during which Mobius used the time theater to show him his life. How does the TVA determine who survives and who dies? Loki queries Mobius. Mobius tells Loki a tale about the TVA discovering a variant in the Black Sea that was supposed to cause thousands of fatalities but turned out to be a small boy instead. Things worsened when one hunter, Renslayer, hesitated to kill the youngster. Mobius is told by Loki that having a mission could be more of a burden than an honor. A moment before he and the world around them vanish, he shakes Mobius' hand and thanks him. In episode 5, Loki travels back in time to the moment before everyone vanished, and he pulls Sylvie out to discuss the matter with her. Sylvie contends that occasionally something must be destroyed in order to be replaced with something better. Loki locks Sylvie and Mobius behind the vault door after time slipping back to just before Timely's walk. Declaring to them that he now understands the type of god he must be, he sets out on the solo walk without a spacesuit. His attire changes into a fresh iteration of his Loki suit as he strolls. After zapping the loom with his skills, he discovers he can physically grip and rekindle each of the withering branches. He strides toward and through the fissure he makes in the space-time continuum. According to Sylvie, Loki is offering them a chance. Loki carries the branches as he approaches a throne. We see that the throne is made of the remnants of he who remains palace when it starts to turn gold. The branches may all start to heal because Loki, perched on the throne, holds them all together. As we pan out, we realize that we have been viewing the branches incorrectly. They are actually the world tree. The TVA returns to normal sometime after and perceives the chronology as the world tree. Miss Minutes is doing her usual thing. According to Mobius, they have been monitoring variations of he who remains, one of whom appears to be the Kang from Quantumania. 
Hunter B-15 hears Mobius say he's going to the real world, but she assures him he'll always have a place at the TVA. TVA convenes. OB receives updated TVA handbook copies. The book is not delivered to the young Victor Timely, which causes him to take an alternative route. When Ravana awakens, she discovers pieces of the TVA floor in the void. She observes Ilioth in action, yet she shows no fear. Mobius keeps an eye on a blissful existence in which he and his children live as humans, with Sylvie at his side. They discuss Loki and what each of their futures might hold. Mobius keeps an eye on his home while Sylvie departs. We see Loki sitting proudly at the center of the world tree. 